What's going on, everybody? You're tuning into another episode of 2010 Minutes. I am your host, Tim McCarthy. Today, we have on a freedom and fulfillment coach, singles and relationship expert, sound healer, author, speaker, and podcaster of the show, Stop Fucking Settling, Jackie Pugh. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How about you? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Um, I always start off with this with all my guests. What does mental health mean to you? Mental health is having the ability to control our own mindset versus it being controlled by other people, in my opinion. That's a short and sweet answer. I love it. So today, me and Jackie are going to go talking about relationships, being single AF, and how it intertwines with mental health. But first, I got to ask this because it's the one thing I didn't understand. What is a sound healer? Uh, have you ever seen like some people have the big brass bowls or um if you've seen Miss Congeniality and, and it's okay if you haven't, um, but like people will put water in a glass and then they'll like lick their finger and put it around the bowl and it'll yep. kind of hum. Uh, I have giant crystal bowls that are tuned to 432 hertz. So our instruments are no longer tuned to 432 hertz like our ancestors had. And so if you were to put today's music on a subwoofer or um, salt on top of a subwoofer and play today's music, the salt would bounce up and down, but it wouldn't land in perfect symmetry. However, if you play 432 hertz on, on the subwoofer and put salt on top, the salt will bounce up and down and it would be perfect symmetry, like a snowflake. And so when those um, um, frequencies go through our body, if we have remnant stuck energy in any of our chakras, and this would be a whole other podcast episode, but it'll move, it, it can help move out remnant stuck energy, which usually comes out in the form of emotions. They'll even have used it on cancer patients. They've seen it to help cancer cells stop replicating. Uh, it's really, really powerful. And it can also be a form of meditation. All right, perfect. That was the one thing I didn't get. Everything else, all your other uh, feathers in your cap, I understood. I was like, I got to ask her right away what that is. <laughs> so what's your relationship with mental health? I definitely have had my bouts of mental health and I still do. Um, I had hit a point in my life where I hit rock bottom and I couldn't get out of bed for literally two months, literally two months. I could not bring myself to go to work. And then finally one day I made it to the couch because I, I was like, what's, what's the common denominator and all of the unfulfillment in my life? Like there's gotta be something good right? There's got to be something good to blame it on. And when I figure it out, I'm going to blame it so hard for all the unfulfillment in my, in my love life and my um, work life and my finances and my friendships and my family and the amount of fun that I'm having. There's a common denominator. And I figured it out. And it was me. I was like, me? Like I had the whole victimhood moment to my own self for about five minutes. And then that's when I realized, wait a minute, if I'm the common denominator, all of the unfulfillment in my life, and that means that I'm the one that have, has the power to change it. I'm not waiting for the boss to change, for the job to change, for the guys to change, for family to change, for friends to change. I have the power to change it. And that day, my life coach launched his very first um, deep, deep self-development group coaching program. And it was $5,000. I hadn't worked in two months. I had no idea how I was going to pay for it. I had no savings. But I made a way out of no way because I knew, like, I knew that that was my out. And now I teach people how to do the same and rewire their brain and, and find fulfillment from the inside versus needing it outside of themselves. I was, that was my next question. You're a freedom and fulfillment coach. What does that entail exactly? Mm -hmm. So the, the outcome that my clients typically have is feeling freedom inside, freedom to do whatever it is that they desire in life and having to worry about what their parents say, what their family says, what society says, and feeling fulfilled. They don't need another human being or a certain title in order to feel fulfilled. They fulfill, feel fulfilled within themselves. Everything else is a bonus. What was your biggest change that you made about yourself? Like in order in order to get to that? Yeah. Um, technically speaking, I needed to rewire my brain. Um, and from a whatever you would call the other the other <laughs> standpoint of it. Um, I did not value myself and all of my worth was in other people. And I had no idea, no idea. All of my worth was in other people, other circumstances, anything outside of me. And so when I figured out how to cultivate that for myself, I mean, there were grown men coming up to me saying, you are glowing. What are you doing? And I'm like, a man is telling me that I'm glowing. Like that's really usually like, a girl thing to say, but my skin was literally starting to radiate from the inside out and nobody knew what I was doing. Like nobody knew, but people could physically see it. 
You're also a sing- uh, Oh wait, hold on. The, what does mental health intertwine with re- relationship issues? How does that How does that work? They're completely intertwined. Yeah. <laughs> They're completely intertwined. If we have things going on in our mind, excuse me, whatever belief that we have about anything, our brain, oh my goodness, what's going on with my wife out of here for a second? (laughs) What just happened? Don't worry, I can edit it out. Oh, (laughs) yeah, I have no idea what that was. Um, Your brain wants to literally prove whatever belief you have true. Okay. Whatever belief that you have running in your mind, it wants to prove true because if it can prove it true, it knows the outcome and the outcome is you didn't die. That's all that it cares about. And so if we have a belief of I'm not lovable, that's deep rooted and deep seated. I'm not lovable. I'm not worthy of love. I'm not good enough. I'm not filling the blank. Our brain will look for evidence out in the world to prove that true. Did you just see how that person looked at you? Did you see that here, the inflection that your partner just had with you? Did you see that um, your family member reached out to that person, but they didn't reach out to you on that day? See, you're not lovable. You're not lovable. And if our brain can't find it, it will literally create distortions. Well, that's a created like a distortion that it creates, right? I'm going to make make my family member calling that person on that day mean that I'm not lovable. Like it literally just distorted that information to prove it true. Or it will actually create scenarios. It'll make it'll cause you to find something to either nitpick or start a fight with somebody in order to prove like once they start getting mad at me see i'm not good enough yeah. i'm not lovable so it's really really important that we that we get clear um in our own minds and work on our own minds and our own mental health in order to have healthy relationships you gotta work on yourself before you work on other people you know mm-hmm how does one obtain self-love? I feel like that's a little loaded question, but it's very hard to do, I, I would assume, because I, I, I'm very I'm very low on self-love, so I can use some tips as well. Yeah, um, and it's probably the thing that people don't want to hear most, but number one thing is I would get support, get support, professional support, um, because like, like I was a personal trainer for the majority of my life, and I always had a personal trainer because I can't I can't see behind me right? I have a blind spot. Same thing when it comes to our mental health. There are a million different perspectives out there. And we're in this little body wearing these little glasses with one perspective. We can't see, we can't see other perspectives or other things that we are doing from somebody else's standpoint. So it's really important to to work with a professional, in my opinion, to point out those blind spots and then give you tools on how to change them, right? Because there's so, so many people walking around and, and clients as well that have been like, I know that I do this thing. Like they're so self-aware and many people are like, oh my gosh, it's so attractive. This person's so self-aware, but if we don't do anything with it, all we're, all we're doing now is saying, I know that I do this thing and I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep self-sabotaging or hurting you or acting this way and throwing temper tantrums. I'm not looking to change it. Um, so number one is I would, I would seek some type of support, whether that's a therapist or a coach or um, some type of support group something where you can actively work on changing your mindset to be in a place of more self-love. Um, other thing is I give you permission. And this is like an easy one. This is a fun one. This isn't anything super deep. But a lot of times we feel guilty for doing things for ourselves. I don't know if that ever pops up for you. Yep. Um, yeah, it pop- that's a, a huge one for me, especially yep. like recovering people pleasers. You, you will burn yourself out. And um I give you permission today, whoever needs to hear this, to go do something for you, solely just for you. And that could be if you need to go have an adult temper tantrum and go scream in a pillow and get your feelings out, do that for you. (laughs) Do that for you. Um, If that means that it's taking a nap, if that means that it's getting a massage or a mani-pedi or taking a bubble bath or buying the thing that you've been wanting to buy for yourself and you never do because you always spend money on other people. Like do something for you solely for you without guilt. Because as, as we've heard the, uh, the analogy of you can't pour from a, from an empty cup, right? Like we want to give to people so much anyways. Um, but what happens is, and I like to give the analogy of an ice cream man, of an ice cream man is sitting there and he's handing out all the ice cream and his like his ice cream truck is like it's like it's like the place to be right and then he never stops to go to the store to get more ice cream eventually he's going to run out of ice cream 
And all of a sudden there's going to be these people that don't have their first dates or don't have these little kids that are always looking for an ice cream man. And they're always looking like that's like their thing that gets them through every week. Or maybe somebody was going to be walking by and they were a mega millionaire and saw this like bump in ice cream truck and they wanted to franchise it. None of that would happen because the ice cream man never went to the store. He never stopped to go get more ice cream. And so taking that time to fill up our own ice cream truck is super important and it's not selfish. Um, what other little tip can I give you for self-love? This is a fun one because Valentine's Day is coming up, right? Yep. Um, and this is a fun one because I know that people are can really get triggered, even if you are in a relationship and you are in a relationship that is not fulfilling. You're not feeling fulfilled. When love songs come on, we can feel really bad, right? Like we could just make us feel really, really bad about ourselves. Something that I love to do with my clients, they all love this assignment, is that I want you to actually find love songs when they come on and sing them about your higher self singing it to you because nobody said it has to be about two people right a couple of them every now and then it's definitely clearly about two people but it actually could be your higher self like loving the crap out of you it's like my two favorite songs that i'll sing to myself are um you know that song it's like i like me better when i'm with you yep i know that one yeah I like seeing that. I'm like, I do like me better when I'm present with myself. Like, yes, girl. And there's another one, Andy Grammer, Fresh Eyes. I I got these fresh eyes. Never seen you before like this. You ever heard that one? No, I've heard that one. I'll sing that one to myself in the mirror. I'm like, yes, girl. Yes. (laughs) You're a new you. You got it going on. Like, I'll sing it. And I feel freaking amazing versus listening to it. And I'm like, oh, I don't have love in my life today. Like, or the person that I'm with, they would never say something like this to me. No, like at the end of the day, the reason why you're feeling the way that you're feeling is because you yourself have abandoned yourself. You stop showing up for you. You stop standing up for you. You stop chasing after your dreams, right? Your little self had all these dreams that I wanted to conquer and you abandoned them. We abandoned them. I abandoned her. And so we get to start loving on ourselves because ultimately that that is the place when we feel super full and we know what our worth is and we're like, damn boo, we look in the mirror, you're doing good today. Maybe you're not exactly where you are, but you're taking steps to, 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 you know, create what it is that you desire in life. Anything else is a bonus. I think with me, I have trouble like feeling like that because I feel cocky sometimes. Like where do you find the difference between cockiness and confidence? So cockiness I just had this conversation with a client actually because he's like, I'm so cocky. I need to work on it. Yeah. Cocky is, um, it actually is stemming from an insecure place, right? Like I need to show you how good I am because I don't think that you're going to see it. If that makes sense. Like a yeah. shark doesn't need to tell you that it's a shark. It's just a shark. Yep. But yep. when we're cocky, like I got to tell everybody because deep down, I feel like you actually aren't going to see it. Um bragging is same thing same thing I need to tell you because you're not going to see it when I see people like it's so interesting because I'll see people on on Facebook or wherever like oh my gosh my husband is the best or my wife is the best and then I know what's going on behind the scenes and it's because they don't want people to see right um there's also the you know if we're higher up on the narcissistic spectrum and we all have to have narcissism in order to have any type of self-confidence um, but people who are higher up on the narcissistic spectrum usually start to lack empathy. And I think that's where that really steps in. Like if, if I'm, um, if I can't, if I'm so quote unquote confident and I can do no wrong and you know, my way is always, is, 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 is the right way. Like you're in the wrong, um, not putting yourself in other people's shoes. That's a different level of confidence. That's not uh, a healthy one. But if we're just like, I'm confident in my abilities, I'm confident in who I am, I want to show up and be a really good person for other people, that's gold. Love it. Absolutely love it. So you're also a singles and relationship expert. One, how does one become an expert in that field? And two, what are some other struggles most single people face? Um, in my opinion, one that becomes an expert with singles. <laughs> it's somebody who's been single. Uh, I've been single for a very, very long time. Um, I know the ups and downs. I've been in healthy relationships. I've been in unhealthy relationships. 
Um, and when it comes to relationships, it's not just romantic relationships. Like how we do one thing is how we do everything. So a lot of times I used to work with, um, I used to have like this little dating show and, and the guy that I worked with was a matchmaker and a dating coach and people would get on him because he was single. Well, how can you be helping people when you're single? Yeah. And my response to people would be, well, would you feel better if he was in the wrong marriage? Would that make you better just because he has the title? Like what I hear and see from what he's showing us is that he's been in relationships. He figured out what worked, what didn't work. And now he has standards and he shows up in a certain way. And so when the next person comes in his life, he'll be prepared for it. He's not going to be in an unhealthy cycle. So uh, how we do one thing is how we do everything. So look at the relationships in your life with friends, with family, with your romantic partners, with past relationships. And I bet that there's some type of correlation between all of them. And, and so if you have been in any type of relationship and have learned how to navigate it, like you have, you have some type of expertise there a little bit. Why do you think it's so hard for people to feel their true emotions? Because society tells us that it's not, it's not cool. Right. Society said it's not brave. It's not strong. You're a weak person. If you show your emotions, if you're a lot of times when we're little um, and this is the whole other topic that we can get into with, with attachment mm -hmm. styles and all the things, but um, we can learn that it's not safe to be ourselves or it's not safe to be seen. Like maybe we're going to get beat or um, we love a parent and then they die or um, our siblings get more attention than we do. And and we start to feel like I'm not good enough. And so I don't want anybody else to see my flaws. I want love. So I'm not going to share what I have going on inside. I'm not going to put myself out there because you might reject me. You might abandon me, which is a feeling that I had when I was little or maybe in um, some other type of relationship. So there's the fear there. And then there's also the societal viewpoint, in my opinion, that says it's not cool. And I'm telling you, it is the cool and brave thing to do. I'm just saying. Just saying. In a healthy way and safe way for other people and yourself. Why do you want to help people? I've always wanted to help people. Yeah. Since I was a little girl. Yeah. I was always just like, I don't know. I was always the inspirer and motivator and cheerleader for other people and other people's dreams. I just, I just loved seeing people be happy. And I didn't, I didn't know that a life coach was a job. Um, had I known that, psychology and all of that could take a, a, a role into more of a life coach standpoint where we do look at the past right we learn from the past but we, we don't stay in the past where a lot of times therapy can be and like dissect everything on a on and kind of keep you back there coaching is more forward thinking like we deal with the past but let's move forward had I known that that was a thing I probably would have gotten my uh degree in psychology but um but I didn't and when I found out what it was, that this was a thing, I immediately worked on myself first, got my own coach, because I feel that you, the best coaches have been where you, where you're, um, the best coaches have been where you currently are. Like they've navigated through it. And so I wanted to be able to help people to the best of my ability. I want to know what are they going to be going through when I give them certain exercises or we dive into things. I want it to be able to help them it's the best of my ability so I got my certifications and now and now 50 percent of my singles have found loving reciprocal relationships people who've been in relationships um have now gotten engaged some have gotten married some people who were married have now have um more healthier dynamics within their marriage it's and and people who are still single it's so fun to see people actually be like Jackie I finally feel like you do where I don't need somebody. I want somebody. It'd be awesome when they come into my life, but I don't need them. I feel whole and complete on my own. What's that Capricorn in you, girl? <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe in the astrology stuff when it comes to dating? I just, I'm always curious with people in this, this question. You know, yes. Like, I think astrology plays a role in it. I think it plays a role in it. I don't think it's the end all be all. I think attachment styles and like personality types and like all the things come into play, but um, I find that I usually, I usually end up dating Leo's. I might, the girl that I do the podcast with, she's also a Capricorn. She always dates Leo's. <laughs> yeah. You, you gotta, know, you're a Capricorn too. You gotta get rid of those Leo's. I know. I know. But there's this like, 
there's a really cool synergy that happens with with Capricorns and Leos. But yeah, I, I generally speaking, when I find out, I'm like, oh, I like you, and then I'm like, Leo. Because Leo's are lions, right? Yeah, and, they're and we're spiders. goats. So lions versus a goat, it doesn't that doesn't match well. I feel like. It's speaking in terms like that. Yeah, I agree. But I think Capricorns and Leos can both be stubborn. And they're both like ambitious signs. Like they both go after things. So it's like they're, I feel like the compatibility for, for ambition and like passion, because there is a little bit of, of the polarities that play there, which can create like awesome sexual tension and stuff that can definitely play a role. But from my experience <laughs> with the Capricorn and Leo, it's probably like, mm, I don't know if that's the best match, but maybe you'll meet a Leo that has a different personality type. Right, right. Um, I deal with this as a Capricorn. I don't know if you do. Do you ever deal with imposter syndrome? Oh, yes. I'll do. Yeah? We all do. How do you deal with it? Well, one, I'll let myself feel it. Um because ener- emotions are just energy and motion. They're meant to come through, we experience them, and they pass. But often they come through, we're like, that one's not cute. We're going to shove it down, and I'm going to carry it with me everywhere I go. And like energy attracts like energy. So if I'm feeling a certain way, I will let the emotion out, and then I will work on my mindset. Sometimes, though, if the if, if it's like a – like I, I'm, I finally have gotten to a point being able to decipher, is this an emotional thing? Is this a mindset thing or is this a hormonal thing? And I'm not just talking about hormones like like girl hormones, guys. Like the food that we eat, everything can can change our hormones drastically. Yeah. And um, so I I I can pretty much decipher when is which. So if it is a mindset thing for me, um, I get to work on that mindset and I get to to remind myself, okay, Jack, you've done X, Y, and Z. You you know what you're talking about. This it happened to me yesterday. It literally happened to me yesterday. I was like, oh, I, I got this new client, and I was like, am I somebody that can help this person with this? And then we got off the call, and I was like, mind blown by myself. I was like, of course you can. Like, look at all the aha moments she had. You know exactly what you're doing. That that stop it, stop. Um, so I actually have a list that I have created of all of the things that I have accomplished, all the things that I know, um, any tiny little baby successes. I don't, if, it, if it, you feel like, oh, I'm not, I'm not smart, who would ever listen to me? I, I had that when I first wanted to be a coach. I'm like, who's ever gonna wanna listen to what I have to say? But then I thought about my coach and I'm like, my coach is a broke surf instructor and I believe everything that he said. <laughs> and now he's a multi, multi-millionaire. But, and I believed everything that he said. So I'm like, okay, well, that's not true. Right, like you, we have to look for actual evidence because there's little T truth and big T truth, and a lot of times our brain wants to believe little T truth. Even movie stars, they talk about it all the time. Natalie mm-hmm. Portman, I just learned Natalie Portman thought about not pursuing acting because she didn't. She thought that she was an imposter, and people were going to find out that she was really bad. And that's mind blowing, right? Like we we all do it, and it's because going back to our brain, our brain likes comfort zones. It oh, likes yeah. a small. Right. And the bigger we get, the more eyes on us, the more like, oh, my gosh, what if they figure something out or the more I can get hurt? So let's just let's dim our light and play small. But it's none of that's usually true. That's what happens with me in this podcast. I feel like I'm an imposter and people are like, oh, he doesn't really like know about mental health, even though like I deal with mental illnesses. So like that happens to me all the time. And it takes me a little bit to realize it's like, no, I am. I am doing what I need to be doing. You absolutely are doing what you need to be doing. You told me your story. Like people need you. People need you. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah. What What's more important, uh, working on the inside or having a group support system? What do you mean? Like, like when you find yourself, like, do you, is that easier to, is that better than searching for help for a support system when you're down and out? Like you, like you, you, you found yourself inside you, like you worked on, you realized you were the problem. Okay. Is that, mm-hmm. is that something to do first or should you reach out to other people for help? reach out to other people for help yeah then you'll get to a place where you feel solid in yourself because i know a lot of times we are like well i should be able to figure this out on my own and i don't want to burden other people and this is too much for people to carry 
and the reality is uh, support is the thing that's going to help you get there the most, right? I like to coach. I, I coach a lot for, um, I do do one-on-ones with another company, but in my own business, I pretty much only do group coaching. I have one program that they go through. They all go through it together. After that, if they want to do one-on-one, they can, because I know, I know I'm going to take everybody through the same exact process. <laughs> So you might as well do it together where you have people that you can go through it together, hold hands with, hold, hold each other accountable. Um, so you're not in it alone, but, but that's what I, in my opinion, gets people to a really dark place is feeling like I should be able to do this by myself. Cause people, when we go to school, people teach us how to, you know, ride a bike, how to draw in or write in cursive, how to drive a car, how to do math. Nobody teaches us. <laughs> Teach us how to deal with any emotion, how to deal with life, how to have a healthy relationship, how there's personality differences in people, and it's not all something personal towards us. Like nobody teaches us that stuff. So when we become an adult, what I see working on our mental health and emotional intelligence is I'm going to go get that master's degree that they refuse to give me in school. Like, give me what you got. Like, what do you guys have that I wasn't given? I want some of that. And that, 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 that's what it is when we're growing. So no, it's, you don't have to do that alone. It would be, it's almost silly to think that we think that we should be able to, it's like, uh, what would be something like crazy? Like somebody giving you a book in Chinese, like read it. Nobody ever taught me, (laughs) right? Right. You can't just read a book in Chinese. Like somebody has to teach you and it's okay. It's okay to ask for that help. As a coach, do you ever get frustrated trying to get through people and they might be a little bit stubborn? I always, I always wondered that with coaches because you, you can't, I, I, unless you're a thousand percent, like you reach everybody and, and like that, but do you ever have, do you ever face that? Um, within my group coaching program, there've been a couple people who are super skeptical. Mm-hmm. Every, every assignment, everything. Mm, I don't know about that. Like everything was just, <laughs> with skepticism. Um, and one of them in particular ended up loving the results so much that she got her own certifications and is now a coach. Um, I don't think I've, I've never had anybody. I've never had anybody in any of my group programs that, that didn't show up to the plate, even if they were skeptical, because we, we talk through it, we work through it, right? Why is that skepticism there? However, if I do have somebody that I don't feel is ready, if they just want to show up, and just complain every day I'm stuck I'm stuck I'm stuck and then I'm asking okay well what have you done like what are you doing to change x y and z well now we're not allowing emotions we're wallowing in emotions and I can't help you there nobody can help you there so the people that I work with are in a place of I'm ready willing and able to make a change like I need to make a change the pain of not changing is much greater than actually changing so let's freaking change what do I have to do um that's where they're at and if I do feel like like you're just not doing the work I I will pause it I will pause it or sometimes maybe you have to let a client go and, and that's okay that they're on their own journey and when they're ready to come back they can but if I keep showing up and you're not ready to do the work I am now training your brain to know that I can stay here and I'm still going to get support. I don't actually have to change. You just sold yourself as a coach. That was like a layup question for you. So it was like an alley-oop, but now you just sold yourself pretty well. So that's good. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Um, So you've been treated poorly uh, and had some terrible ex-relationships. For you and somebody else out there, how do you trust the next person? Especially if you've been maybe heartbroken a bunch of times or you got mistrusted by somebody else. Mm -hmm. How does, uh, how do you trust the next person? One, you work on you. So most often I see people jump from relationship to relationship to relationship. That used to be me. So I would bring all of my baggage and all the lessons that I didn't actually learn and know where I was taking responsibility or accountability. And I was in victimhood and I brought that into my next relationship. And I'm hoping that that person's going to make it all go away. But now I have no trust. Like in my bag that I just brought with me, there's no trust. Now you have to show me that I can trust you, right? Like I'm going to nitpick and and do all these little things, which in actuality can become a form of self-sabotage and push that person away. Now we have more evidence. I can't trust somebody. So number one is work on yourself, let yourself heal and deal from past relationships. Um, And then number two, the more that you work on yourself, the more that you get clear on who you are, 
why you operate the way that you do. You've changed unhealthy patterns that you've had in the past. And you're clear on what type of person compliments you. You're clear on that. Then, now you know when you go out into the world, you are discerning who comes in, right? We're no longer coming from a place of I need, I need, like that was me. Like you're cheating on me or you're lying or you're treating me like crap. You're making me an option and not a priority. Please stay, please stay. Because if you leave, I have nothing. I've just given you a silver platter with all my worth, value, everything, and you've taken it with, with you. So I would beg for people to stay, which would then keep me in unhealthy dynamics. So now it's, it's choosing partners that you enjoy and you observe for a while. Like for my people pleasers out there, my anxious attachment styles, even the avoidance, a lot of times you jump in like head first right away and you get intimate right away and you don't allow time or space for, for you to actually enjoy and observe this person and see, is this somebody I want to add into my life? How do I feel when my energy is, is in this person's presence? How do I feel when I lead them? Do I feel energized or drained? Is this person consistent when I don't see them? Do they still consistently show up? Or are they flaky and create inconsistency? And I'm trying to fight through that. Like look at their patterns and it starts to become not how do I fit into this person's life? How does this person naturally fit into my life? I worked on me. I'm cool with me. I love myself. How do you naturally fit into my life? I'm interviewing you now. Opposite. Right. Now, I feel like the biggest problem, this is a personal uh, opinion, is dependency. Do you, de- do you deal with that a lot with people that they are trying to be more independent? And if so, like, what is like a good tip for that, for that uh, transition? Can you tell me a little bit, a little bit more? Like, like, an like, like people are too dependent on their relationship. So, say someone, their ex relationship, they've depended on that person so much, and now they're wow. single and they need that dependency for somebody else, and they jump into another relationship. How can someone be more independent? They have to take the break from dating, in my opinion. Like when people go through my program, there's no dating. <laughs> You're not dating, and people are like, oh my god, <laughs> right for like four months. And I literally, every single person, every single person at the end of the program says, thank you for making me not date. Thank you for making me sit and like, get to know myself. Thank you, because I wanted to reach out to my ex, or I wanted to date that other guy that is I now I see is totally not right for me. I don't want my ex back. What the heck was I thinking? Take a break away, because what happens when we fall in love? Uh, the same things fire in our brain the way it does when we do something like cocaine around a drug. And so when we go through a breakup, we go through withdrawal, just like we would from a drug. And then we're looking for somebody to fill it immediately, but you have to go through that withdrawal first and actually show yourself, I am okay on my own. And get that support. Talk to friends, talk to family, get a professional, get that support so that you aren't alone in your thoughts, right? That's, that's very different. Work on you and then add somebody in. And, and then you have those clear boundaries. You have very clear boundaries for yourself. Once you work on yourself, when I get into a relationship, I'm still going to go to the gym Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'm still going to meal prep on Tuesday, Thursday. I'm still going to go to that dance class or that karate class on every Saturday. Because a lot of times people will give that up and then they lose themselves in the relationship. So keep those little things for you. I love your analogies. You, you've you had a lot of analogies this um, interview, and I'm a big analogy guy as well. So I think that's another Capricorn trait, which uh, <laughs> I'm loving. Um, this might be a good question. Uh, do you feel like you might be intimidating the men with all your knowledge and titles? Uh, I definitely have been. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. Like, like, so you meet somebody and they're like, oh, what do you do for work? And they're like, oh, geez, like I'm going to be put on the spot. So do, do you, you feel like that sometimes? Yeah. And, and I have, but I also know that my person isn't going to be intimidated by that. They're going to find that inspiring and attractive. So if if you are intimidated by it, then that probably might mean, it might tell me that you haven't worked on yourself, but if you have worked on yourself with a professional, you're going to be understanding places that I'm coming from and you're going to be able to, um, relate to me in a more mindful way versus a surface level way so if if they're intimidated by it like that's not my problem it's their problem you know what I mean like 
you could be a, a rocket scientist. I know nothing about being a rocket scientist. I can be like, oh, God, I can't, I can't talk to this person because I'm not a rocket scientist. Or I could be like, that's so cool. Tell me more. I want to learn about it. What are some things you learned from others on your journey as a coach? Like from clients or yeah. colleagues? From clients. Every client makes me a better coach. <laughs> <laughs> Every client makes me a better coach. Um, I've grown so much just literally just by being a coach. You know, when I first started my first, very first, the first round of my group program, I, I, I had moments where like, God, whatever it is that you guys believe in, I'm going to say God, the universe, I got tested on my people pleasing. I was used to be, I used to apologize for breathing. Like I was the biggest people pleaser. And I had some clients that put me through the ringer and they stepped up and would attack me. I had one client who would attack me multiple times, like not physically, <laughs> but mm -hmm. like that I'm a horrible coach. I don't know what I'm talking about. How can I be helping when I'm the one that's single? And like, like it was nasty. I had another guy, like, it's all your fault. It's all your fault. You told me to do X, Y, like to, I forget, it was something about Facebook. And now my ex is mad and blah, 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 blah. And, it, and I had moments where I wanted to be like, oh my God, like, this is all my fault and I'm a bad coach and blah, blah, blah. And, and I had my person that I, I met in, in a group self-development program. And I was like, this is what's going on. She's like, Jackie, they hired you for a reason. Like they hired you to be their coach. Say what it is that you actually, you know, are seeing. And then I'm like, I would step up. This is what I'm seeing. This is why this is not on me. This is actually something that you did. I didn't do that. The, the, the girl I just told you about that would attack me. Yeah. Has now gotten out of that super healthy, unhealthy relationship and has married the love of her life and is the most calm, peaceful girl ever. And she literally still will send me messages. I'm so sorry how I treated you. None of that was you. It was all because of you that I have love now. And thank you so much for not giving up on me. Like I didn't give up on them, but I didn't back down. And that has helped me grow more and more and more to learn that my yeses mean yes and my noes mean no. Like, even the other day, I was talking to my girlfriend. Um, we're working on a project together. And I was like, hey, if I fly in, do you think that we can commit to like getting this much done a day? And she was like, honestly, I think I could commit to this much. And we talked about it. And she's like, because I knew, she's like, I know that when Jackie says something, she means it and she's going to show up. And so I have to ask myself, is this something that I can commit to or not? If not, what is that? Because I know she's going to be there and she's going to hold me to it. So it really has helped me step into to my own power. And I'll see clients do things where I'm like, either that's what I used to do. It might be something that I didn't realize that I used to do. Or it might be something where I'm like, huh, I have done that before. And I never saw it in that, like being on my side of it now. Note it. I'm not doing that anymore. And that's where it stems from. And so it's just like a constant, constant growing journey. It's fun. It's fun. <laughs> For this uh, Valentine's Day coming up, what are some tips for people that are lonely and single? Like, what should they be doing on Valentine's Day when they feel a little down and out? Yeah. Number one, go do something that lights you up. Like we talked about, you have permission to do that. It's mandatory. Go do something for you. You don't have to sit at home just because it's Valentine's Day. Uh, number two, sing those love songs about you. Okay. Not somebody else. Number three, give love. So, we so badly want, I want, I want this, I want that, I want, I want all these things. But there's a law of reciprocity of what we give, we get. So if you want more love in your life, you get to give more love in your life. Send your friends a message. I love, I love paying it forward with strangers. I have goosebumps talking about it. You know, like leave a note on somebody's car. I hope that you have an amazing day. Buy the coffee for the person behind you. Go give some food to the homeless. Be of service to other people so it's no longer about you. It's about you're a human being that's here for a purpose and your purpose is to shine your light, have fun and help others shine their light. So go do something for somebody else. Shine bright like a diamond. Am I right? Bright like a diamond. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> um, I know you don't have much time left, but I have to ask, do you have any horror stories on dates that you've had? Listen to my podcast. <laughs> oh, great segue. Let's talk about the podcast. What can people <laughs> expect from the show? Uh, it's, it's myself and, and my girlfriend, Erica, she's a love coach. And, um, we just, I, I, I wanted to check out Austin to 
see what it was like. And so uh, she had a, a furnished studio above her house. So I went and I rented it and we had just met uh, and we ended up hitting it off and we would just stay up eating peanut m ms because we don't really drink. <laughs> and we would talk about all of the dating things going on in our lives and our friends' lives. And it would be so funny. Like we would crack each other up, but we would both walk away learning something. Like it was always valuable. And she's, we're very similar, but we're very different. So we're also, we're both Capricorns. Like so there's things that we're, we're very, very similar. We're both goofballs, but she tends to be more avoidant and I'm more anxious. So when we would have these conversations, we would learn a ton. So we decided to create a passion project, which is our podcast called Stop Fucking Settling. We say the shit your friends won't say. Um, and and we get more personal on that podcast. So we talk about dating stories, whether they're, you know, good for states or bad for states. We talk about life lessons that we've had from our own lives in a fun way. Like it's it's just it's a really fun podcast, but you're gonna learn a lot from it. What does self-care look like for Jackie Peel? It is an ongoing journey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a self-care is self-love, I'm good with. Self-care is something that um, I'm still working on creating a, a pattern for. So, or I should say a habit. I go in and out of it. I'm getting better with it, but I am a Capricorn. So I, I will work myself to death. Like if I'm into a project, I will stay up forever until it's done. Um, so these days, these days, I now make sure that I schedule two days off every Saturday, Sunday off, which I never used to do. I make sure that I see friends at least once a week. Um, I make sure that I'm done with work now by five. I used to work till midnight. I get into the gym multiple times a week. I have my little schedule. And for anybody who doesn't like going to the gym and does not like cardio, because I do not like cardio, I make it my show time. So I don't really let myself watch TV at home. But when I'm on the treadmill and I'm doing my like intervals walking, I'll, I'll watch a show. That's really fun. So I look forward to the show. It's no longer like gym time. It's show time. Um, and those are just some, some little things. And I get, I usually get like, um, a couple of massages a month. Burnout is real. So you do have to take care of yourself. So you know how it is working hard. You, people forget that they can burn out real easy. I was on bed rest for two months. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's tough. Um, yeah. so where can, where can everyone find you on the internet? Well, I hang out on Instagram the most, which is Jackie underscore Pew. I'm sure you can find it in the notes on how to spell it. Uh, or you can go to my website, JackiePew.com. And I have a bunch of stuff coming out, like a bunch of stuff. There, well, there's a, a um, I have the seven secrets to being single AF and loving life. That's in my close Facebook group. I have my, my coaching program, Burn, with full life transformation program. That's the four month long program. That's on my website if you want to apply. And there'll be a bunch of downloadables coming as well, like dating do's and don'ts, um, how to keep the girl, um, sound healings and meditations and all of that to, to download. Absolutely love it. Let's finish with these two questions. What is your personal theme song? You might already have the answer from earlier, but like think of yourself as like a professional boxer or wrestler. Jackie Pugh comes out to the crowd. What song is playing? You know, I've been marinating on this and I feel like I'm going to have to get back to you, but I will tell you what my favorite song is. Can I tell okay. you my favorite Yeah, song? let's do that. But I like that question. I'm like, oh, like I'm gonna get so into this. My favorite song is "Call Me Up" by Thomas Rhett. Okay. It's like a, it's a country song, but it's like beachy country, and it's just like I don't know, it's just like feel good music. Like if you're, he's like, if you're feeling down, call me up, which is kind of the opposite of what it is that we're talking about here, looking yeah, for yeah, external yeah. validation. But it just puts me in like a really, really good, happy mood, and I will play that mofo on repeat. Like it is my jam. It is my jam. All right. Well, that's going to be your theme song for now until you give me a new one. Deal. <laughs> <laughs> and now, what are three things that you're grateful for today? Three things that I'm, it's snowing outside. I woke up to so much snow. I'm, I love the snow. It's uh, so cool. Where are you, you know? located? Chicago. Oh, uh, I hate the snow. I'm in, I'm in Massachusetts and I, I loathe the snow, but I'm glad that you're grateful for it. We need people to be grateful for it. I love it. Because if it's going to be cold, it might as well be pretty. Otherwise, it's just dead outside. <laughs> cool. It's cold. I'll, I'll give that to you. Yeah. So the snow makes me so happy. Um, and then I get to work from home, 
here I am with you. I'm at home and I have my puppy love literally right next to me right now. And um, that I had a really, really fun night with friends last night. Like we got to get all dolled up. It was restaurant week in Chicago. I, I like doing new things. I've never done that before. And we went to this like super cool steakhouse that had these like, almost like waterfall, like sexy chandeliers hanging down. And like, we like ordered like one of everything so that we could all try everything. And it was, it was, just, it was super fun. It was fun. Ladies, ladies night. I love it. Uh, we glossed it, over. There was a guy there too. Oh, there was? It, it, <laughs> it was hey, ladies girl, night can have my guys. Her cousin. <laughs> <laughs> love it. You kind of glossed over it, but what type of dog do you have and what's its name? She's a little poodle mix. She's a rescue. And her name is Ella, like Cinderella. And I, she's the life of my life. I love it. Dogs are just the greatest thing that we could ask for in life. I know. I know. Jackie Pugh, thank you so much for coming on. That was This has been a lot of fun, a lot of good information. People out there, if you're single as fuck, don't worry about it. Go see Jackie Pugh for your coach and life lessons. Yay. Thank you so much for having me. This was so fun. You're so good at this. <laughs> thank you so much. That's another episode of 2010 Minutes. Let's break the stigma by cracking a smile. I will see you soon. Bye. Round one, fight. All right, so before we get started, I do this with all my guests. I want to see if you want to play with me. Do you want to play a game of two out of three rock, paper, scissors? Yeah. Hell yeah. I like I like the no hesitation. So I'm going to call it. I'm going to keep my eyes closed to make it fair, but I do rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Some people have it different, but that's the way I do it. Okay. You ready? Are we playing for something? Oh, you're the second person that asked that. What do you want to play for? I don't know. I yeah, don't, I don't know. either. I just, I, 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 just play for, I just play for bragging rights. <laughs> okay, then we can play for bragging rights. All right, perfect, perfect. Let me know when you're ready. I'm just wondering, does my does my internet seem okay? Yeah, it seems good to me. Okay, because I'm, like, I'm like, I don't, suddenly I don't know if my Wi-Fi, oh, my Wi-Fi is on. Okay, we're good. Fantastic. All right. All right, let's catch these hands. You ready? Mm -hmm. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Ooh, one nothing. One nothing. <laughs> All right. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh! oh! <laughs> that was quick. That was quick work. I won. <laughs> I won. You had scissors. I had rock both times. Oh, it looked like paper. Are you sure? <laughs> I swear, hey, I swear to God, that's why. See, I do it like this. So it's upside down paper holding the rock. So oh, I'm not okay. a cheat. I'm not a cheat. Okay. <laughs> You've dealt this with cheaters. I'm not a cheater. Communication, right? Yep. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. This podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. If you are feeling suicidal, please dial 911.